Hey guys, Reganite 71 here. Back with you for another episode. I've been out mowing the yard today. It is hot. It's like 100 degrees out here right now, and that's why I'm sitting in the shade, and the video quality might not be as good, but while I was mowing, I got to thinking. Last year, I did the drunken composting video where we can turn grass clippings and leaves into usable soil in seven to 10 days. One of the things I realized as I went back and looked at it a few days ago is I didn't have a wireless mic and it was very hard to hear. Because of that and because we have so many new subscribers, I thought I'd do a quick video on how it's done and do it in a way that you can actually hear it. So let's do that. Now ordinarily, if you just mow your grass and throw it into a pile, you're gonna wind up with a big stinky mess that's not really gonna break down really well. It might heat up and it might turn to ash, yeah, but that's about it. If you use the composting method, let me show you two piles here. These are two compost piles that I've got going on right now. This one right here is about seven days old. And here's what it looks like now. This was grass clippings, leaves, and some, uh, some compost put on top of it. As you can see here, we still have the appearance of some grass, but it's breaking down really nicely, and it's uh, starting to turn. Let me show you the other pile now. This pile is about two weeks old, and it is breaking down, it broken down even better. And it looks really good, it's very rich, and the plants will thrive on it. This first pile will continue to break down. Now, like I said, it's been seven days, after seven days of setting up the pile with the tonic, I'll turn it with a little mini tiller. You could also use a pitchfork or just a rake or whatever, but I get the pile completely turned over and then I let it sit for another three to four days and then it looks like this pile behind me. The actual drunken composting formula is extremely simple. All it involves is using a can of beer, a can of Coke, and eight ounces of household ammonia. And that's it. You need a 20 gallon hose in sprayer. This 20 gallon sprayer will pump out 20 gallons of water over the volume of everything that's in it. So we'll put a can of beer in here. And we'll put a can of cola. And then next we'll put eight ounces of ammonia in. The yeast in the beer and the sugars in the cola feed the beneficial bacteria in the compost and basically supercharge it and get it to going fast. Now in addition to our tonic for the compost, one of the key ingredients is having green grass because that green grass is going to heat up and heat the pile. It's going to cook off the seeds, it's going to going to cook off all the pathogens and it's going to help everything break down. But if you have one big massive pile of grass and nothing else, then it's just going to sit there and it's going to smell and stink and you know get moldy and all that and it's going to going to fire up real quick fizzle and then that's it and turn to ash. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this grass here and what I want to do is have about two to four inches of grass and then two to four inches of brown organic matter like leaves, old compost, things of that sort in between each layer we're going to spray it with the uh, with the compost tonic the drunken compost tonic the taller you can get your pile the better and I really really prefer doing it on the ground because that allows worms to come in and get in there and leave all of the good stuff that worms can leave behind once we've got our grass down we're going to give it a give the entire layer a good spray you don't have to get it super soggy, just spray it in. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I keep a bucket under the sink. I've got coffee grounds, potato peels, chopped up pieces of vegetable, lots of eggshells from where we make eggs. I nuke the shells for about a minute and then crumble them up in here. Uh, banana peels are an excellent source of potassium. And on top of every green layer, I'm gonna put some of this stuff. After I do that, I spray again. Now 
Now, if you get a lot of leaves on your property, you could just pile them up next to your compost area and just crumble them in and add them as you go. Uh, one of the good things about piling them up is that, uh, they will draw the worms and they'll get a head start on your leaves for you. But short of leaves or anything like that, you take compost, other materials, and what you want to do is layer, get a layer going on here of brown matter. I've about used up all of my leaves from this year. And so I'm going to have to go back to adding uh, older compost on top. And so I'll do that with this other pile next to it. What this is doing is it's locking the heat that the grass generates in. And it's also keeping the sun from bleaching this bad boy out. You don't want the sun bleaching out your compost pile because it'll stop the cooking process. Okay, so I got a brown layer on. Now I'm going to spray it down. We'll spray that brown layer. Like that. And then we add more grass. And we do this over and over and over until all of our mowed grass is in one big compost pile. And we spray it down. We add in more of our non-greasy food scraps. You don't ever want to compost meats and things that are greasy. You don't want that stuff in your compost pile. Just non-greasy stuff. The finer you chop your vegetables and things like that, your waste, the faster they'll break down also that way. Something else that I would recommend that you do is uh, get you a tarp or a piece of carpet or something like that to throw over the very top of the pile when you get done. Because one thing that I have noticed is this draws worms like crazy, and that's so good. But because it draws worms, it'll also draw birds, and they will get onto your pile and eat your worms away. But they can't do that if you cover it with a tarp. And of course, the other benefit is, is it'll hold in the heat, and it will also keep the sun from bleaching it out so fast. We're just going to do this over and over and over in layers until we get the whole thing done. Seven days later, you come back, you turn it with a, a mini tiller is ideal because it'll really get in there and grind everything up real good. And in about uh, 10 to 14 days from the time you start, this is what you wind up with. Rich compost with some really good stuff for your garden. And it makes a fine mulch to put over it midsummer and to build up around your tomatoes so they can grow more roots. It's drunken composting. It sounds silly, but it really, really works. This is Reaganite 71. Guys, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. Thank you so much for your support. We'll see you next time. If you want to turn your grass into rich soil, try the drunken composting method.